The Doors från Los Angeles. Gruppen har en LP ute som säljer bra och dessutom en hitsingel. Light My Fire. Jag befinner mig bakom scenen på Fillmore och framför mig har jag gruppmedlemmarna. Jim Morrison, singer. I'm Rayman's Eric, organ. John Densmore, drums. Robbie Krieger, guitar. Uh, how do you feel about the uh, San Francisco audience? How does it compare with uh, Los Angeles? Well, uh, I like playing in San Francisco. I think it's a different kind of audience than uh, Los Angeles. The people are... Uh, the L.A. audience, uh, sometimes uh, they're, ne they're not really with you. But when they are with you, it's much more exciting. The audience is much more charged with excitement. But uh, here, although the people get with it much easier, they're not... Uh, somehow they never really get as excited as the L.A. audience. Where is the place where it's all happening, so to say, in the States right now? West Coast. Just West Coast. Yeah. L.A., San Francisco, all up and down the coast. At this point, You've got the same sound uh, on stage as on records. Do you want to do any more experimenting in the studio in the future? Ready to tell. Well, I think uh, the second album, we're working on that right now, and I think uh, we're going to elaborate much more on the production in the studio. Working in the studio and working in person are really two different things entirely. The first album, I think, captures our in-person sound, but uh, we didn't understand the studio, whereas after the first album uh, we've gotten the experience and we realize what the studio is and what can be done in there. So the second album is going to uh, utilize the facilities of the studio to the uh, fullest extent that we can at the moment. And uh, it won't sound like the in-person sound, but I really don't think there's any reason that a record should sound exactly like a group sounds in person. We've done that already, anyway. You write uh, almost all of the songs yourselves. Is there any particular subject you'd like to deal with? If there's any motif, it just comes out through our brains. And we don't, we don't try to, say, concentrate on one thing like love or politics or anything like that. A central theme or a motif, a thread running through the songs we don't have but we definitely do have uh, generate an atmosphere or a mood which might be characterized as an awareness of the strange that something's wrong, something's not quite right. Yes, Jim, uh, I think someone quoted you saying, I like confusion and weird situations. I think I said I was interested in uh, anything about rebellion, chaos, disorder, and activity that appears to have no meaning. How do you feel about uh, the uh, young generation and the old generation? The, the gap is getting wider day by day. The old are getting older and the young are getting getting somewhere. <laughs> You'd be 30 years old as well, or an over. But you still want to go on playing? Uh, how long do we want to go on playing? I don't know, I guess until we get tired of it. That, uh, <coughs> I don't know when that will possibly be, because every time we go on stage, every time we go into the studio, it's a new experience. We don't, uh, we don't really have any set forms as such, so... Every time we play, we're free to uh, explore, improvise, elaborate. So it's a constant, uh, constant change, constantly new. Well, the doors certainly seem to be bound for a nationwide breakthrough. All I can do is to wish you four guys continued success. I enjoy very much talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. So. That was some kind of interview. Apparently, uh, it was in June of '67. Uh, they sound very young, very fresh. Talking about the basically the doors of perception. <laughs> they played a break on through at the end of the uh, interview, which is pretty cool. Uh, I don't know what really what radio show that was. This was actually some kind of bootleg I found and wanted to play it to kind of um, do an introduction 
to my recent video I did and uh, this time period and era of the doors if you listen to this interview um, pretty much describes the band and what they write about or or what they're trying to explain I guess their music very trippy how just the way they talk it's like it's like so magical and uh, it's very psychedelic it's a very psychedelic interview I mean um, very different kind of an interview that you would hear from the doors then compared to like for example um, the uh, the Beatles for example um, so the one thing I wanted to show in this uh, or talk about in this in this um, video is I'm going to show something in this book and I'm also going to talk about my recent video I did of the doors live at the Avalon Ballroom in San Francisco uh, 1967 and uh, two of the songs I did were from this again this uh, official it's not like a bootleg bootleg, but it's kind of like a bootleg uh, six CD box set that I picked up called The Doors Light My Fire Alive, 1967-1972. And there's two, there's, again, there's six discs on here. Um, some of the, it's all live material. Some of the material on here has already been released. I'm not going to get too into uh, detail too much. But uh, we're just sticking to disc one because this is, seems to be the more earlier stuff. And I did Moonlight Drive and Backdoor Man from this, which was the which was performed at the Avalon Ballroom again in San Francisco. Now there's a discrepancy in the date. That's why that's what made me want to do this video. And on the back of this it says March fifteenth, nineteen sixty seven. After doing some research I found out that the Avalon Ballroom show was actually, I think there were two shows. There was one on April 14th and one on April 15th, 1967. And it was not March 15th, 1967. So I just wanted to clear that up. Uh, again, all my videos and all the description I put in the description below of my videos and what I talk about verbally is mainly about, uh, well, obviously they're, for the most part, they're facts, but I try to keep it as accurate as possible, and I try to clear up any kind of discrepancy. I'm never a one to believe of talking about um, a conspiracy or a rumor, because there's people that get too much into that, and then it's false information. And that's why, when it comes out, it's like Pandora's box, and now we got all this wrong information out there. So we can only go by the information that we have left from the surviving members of the doors and. Their, um, their memories from so long ago from John Densmore and Robbie Krieger today and whatever we have left from Jim and uh, Ray so uh, on that note what I found in this book which was really cool again um, I'm going to get more in this book in a separate video but I want to talk about a particular page in this book this is the illustrated history not to be confused with the September 1983 issue of the Illustrated History, The Doors, which I did a uh, part one of a certain amount of pages and chapters on my channel for that book. Go on my channel, check it out. Not That book is not to be confused with this. This is a separate book. Uh, trippy cover. Really cool. I like that. One of my favorite photos, too. Um, and you open it up. It's got this cool psychedelic Joel Brodsky looking photo with a filter on it. But it looks pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, not to go off topic. Uh, I found this out in the back of the book. It was really neat. And I've only seen, I only own like th three Doors books. I think there's only really three really good ones out there. And I actually found this like recently. I thought this was really cool. In the back of the book, Supposedly, starting on page 163, Selected Live Shows is the chapter, 1966 to 1972. So they go into a little bit of uh, 
uh, the, the doors after uh, Morrison, which is also just as, just as successful, in my opinion. Just a different era of doors, but, you know, people have their opinions. Ah, it's not the same without Jim Morrison. It's still the doors. It's just a different era. It's still, you know, Robbie, Ray, and John breaking on through to the other side. Also, another great photo. Show that again. That's like an early 66, 67, uh, early Doors photo. Sometime, either sometime in 66 or early 67. And back to what I was saying about the selected live shows, 66 to 72, uh, starting on page 163, it has just about every show that they ever did from those years. And I found this by accident. And I guess while I'm on the subject, not to get too off topic about my recent live Doors concert videos I did, on the drums only so far, it says late February through May, London Fog. So I did the London Fog show on the drums only so far. Go on my channel, check it out. So I was right. There's no exact, well, what we have. We can only go by the information we have. Sometime in late February through May was when they played at the London Fog. And we'll have an exact day. Now if you go to, just give me a second here. Let me find it. So they played at the Avalon Ballroom on um, according to the book they played on the at the Avalon Ballroom on March 3rd and March 4th it's in San Francisco California they have it here and then the next show that they did couple shows after that was the Matrix show, which I did on drums and guitar. Check it out on my channel. On March 7th, March 8th, and March 9th, March 10th, March 11th. Now that's another discrepancy. The Matrix album that I have says the concerts was a series of five shows only recorded on between, or I'm sorry, not between, it just said March 7th and March 10th. So you're telling me that you, they did five shows within two days, 24 tracks on the November 2008 album release? I don't know, it's hard to believe. This seems like it has a little more accurate information. So it looks like they played at the Matrix Theater starting on March 7th through March 11th. So that's a uh, one, two, three, four, five. That would make up the five shows not March 7th and just March 10th. It's in my description on those videos and that's only because that's before I found this out. So, but also that's according to the credits in the booklet in the uh, album, Live at the Matrix, which was released in November uh, of 2008. So there's a discrepancy there. Um, and again, like this is like a super nerd video right now. I'm sorry if I'm boring you, or, or uh, if, if this is not interesting to you at all. But I'm just—it's just funny how, like I said, when you do this research and you find this information, and um, you know, one resource says something else than what the other resource says. So I'm just out there pointing it out. Another classic photo there. And then, real quick, right here we have the Avalon Ballroom again in 67 on April 14th and April 15th of 1967 at the Avalon Ballroom. On March 15th, which is with this uh, CD box I had, they never played a show on March 15th, 1967. 
So, it goes to show you basically the recordings that I did for the latest drum performance I did on my channel for The Doors, one of their shows, the Avalon Ballroom in San Francisco. It was either a early March show or it was a it was the April 14th or and or 15th show of 1967. So I just wanted to clear that up. Um, and that's it, guys. Uh, so I, this book pretty much has the dates of the door shows. I thought that was pretty neat, so I just wanted to make a quick video for that. Go on my channel, check it out. I did the Avalon Ballroom uh, in San Francisco. Again, either early March or April 14th or 15th uh, show, 1967. There's only like three recordings available that we have, which is Moonlight Drive, Backdoor Man, and Who Do You Love? Believe it or not. The, the CD version I have on disc one only has Moonlight Drive and uh, Backdoor Man. So thanks again, guys. I'll see you in the next video. And subscribe to the channel. Check it out. And Rockstars92. And um, stay tuned. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.